Hey, what's up, guys? We are back again with the 2.6 Hogrider deck that refuses to lose. No matter the matchup, no matter the meta, this thing will always be strong and still work. If you keep your Musketeers alive, you can outplay any matchup. So let's go jump straight some games on ladder and assert some dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And a massive thank you to everyone that's using Criticode Sir Tag, elevating our memes and editing to the next level. All right, so we're jumping into this game. Let's rush right through with a Hogrider and an Ice Spirit. Oh, it's definitely gonna be a Pekka deck. Let's go. Oh, I love this matchup. So as long as I don't play like a potato, I have a great matchup here. If you're running 2.6 Hog Runner, you actually hard counter Pekka every single time. So we're going to go in for a Skeleton Surround on top of that Royal Ghost. And maybe the Musketeer is going to give us the value that we deserve. Let's go. Absolutely no value. So I'm going to go in for a Ice Golem and a Hog. And he Dark Prince is in the back. Let's go. No. Why do you have Fireball, man? I guess it kind of makes sense, but that was brutal. That was way more value than you deserved. I could go for an Ice Spirit here. Oh, all right. I guess we're definitely going for an Ice Spirit here. We're going to go in for Skeletons afterward and then Ice Golem here. This is one of the most scuffed defenses I've ever done, but it's what we have to do to make it happen for the memes. Skeletons are not in cycle anymore. We just didn't have anything for that Magic Archer besides a log. At least we get chip damage on the tower. So we are actually up a thousand damage right out of the gate against a P.E.K.K.A player. That's not that bad. I like it. The only thing that's more difficult is the fact that he's got Fireball, so now he can knock back my Hog Rider. Generally with this type of matchup, because he doesn't have poison, I can just cycle my Musketeer behind the weaker tower and be like, hey, you want to try to kill that Musketeer? Have fun with that, dude. You're going to Fireball and Zap, and then you have nothing for the cannon, you just lose. So I'm ready for it. You can't even hit everything with the poison because you don't have poison. So this is great. It's going to give us phenomenal fireball value here, too. So we'll go and snag that. I can log this all back. And he's going <laughs> to... He actually... Oh, wait. No, he's going to zap right now. Oh, he's definitely going to zap. I felt like he was going to zap, so I had to ice go him preemptively. I just didn't want that Pekka to touch my tower, guys. Oh, the little Larry! The little Larry that could! Maybe the ice go can get some vigorous headbutt on the tower. I don't know. This is pretty much uh, a vibe for me, for sure. So we're gonna try to go and kite this other side. If we can get the hog at her down perfectly, then it gets absolutely no damage on the hog. Obviously, it's not gonna get any damage on the tower, but it would have gotten no damage on the uh, hog rider too. So I'm gonna fireball here just to get more value, forcing out extra elixir on the other side. Maybe we swerve him and start going to the other side now because we got a lot of damage. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Last time we were able to fireball on top of an electro wizard that he aggressively placed. Oh, he's just gonna preemptively fireball and zap. That's fine. I'm okay with that. We just go in for a nice goal and a hog rider. We're like, hey. Hey, I like your decision here, man. Keep donating elixir right into skeletons and cannons. I'm about it, never doubt it. And then we go in for another one of these, and we're like, hey, thanks for the fireball, brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> and then the musketeer is just sitting there in the corner like, wow, I have to kill this musketeer. I have to kill this all by myself. I have to kill the big mama Pekka. And everything else that this man decides to spam at me. What is up with this guy fireballing every single time he can? Like, there's no reason for that. It's not going to work. You savage, you absolute madman. So we ice golem here, we go and pull you to the other side, and now you're focused on this tower, where we go opposite lane on you, and you can't even get a peck a counter push in the lane that you want. So this is miserable for my man. We're able to go in for an ice spirit, and then follow up with a hog rider, and uh, I think Love that we're gonna be able to stun the Pekka. Maybe I don't, ah, nope. I don't think I did, because he zapped it in time. Well played, well played. Gotta give credit where credit is due, I did not expect that, my brother. So we ice golem here, stop you in your tracks. I can go for a high cannon if I'm an absolute memer, but I'm not that memey. We can Skeletons here afterward, Fireball on top of the Magic Archer, clean that up. Ice Spirit's going to be very clutch here. And then I Ice Golem so we keep the cannon alive so he doesn't break through. <laughs> if the cannon doesn't break down, you break down your opponent's tower. It's a simple one-for-one -one transaction. So he's playing a lot better right now. He's playing super defensive. As you guys see in double or triple Elixir, it's way harder for you to break through because your opponent's just going to be able to go for P.E.K.K.A., Electro Wizard, all these different cards that are really annoying. But eventually... I'm telling you, like 10 years down the line, when you get a Hog Rider down and your opponent doesn't have enough Elixir, then you can go in for a Fireball and maybe get a Hog Rider hit. So that's what I'm talking about. We knock the Electro Wizard in a bad spot that he doesn't want to be dropping it. Then we go in for another Hog Rider here because he's overcommitting. And then he has no Elixir and then he loses the game. So it only took a fat year for this man to just overcommit eventually in Triple Elixir for me to win with the Hog. <sighs> Sometimes you just have to play Fireball and Log Cycle and Triple and Double Elixir, but in single, you can definitely get a lot of damage with that Hog Cycle. So jumping right into this game, guys, we are running 2.6 Hog Rider, one of the strongest decks for the entirety of Clash Royale. Like, this thing is not moving anytime soon, and it has always been at the top of the list. 
Obviously, Musketeer is the one card that you gotta protect no matter what you're playing against. You drop a Musketeer, you protect it, you're gonna get value. We're family. You're stronger together. Also, this guy's definitely got Golem or Lava Hound or something. He did not drop a single card there. So, we are gonna go in for that Hog, get a couple hits on the tower. Really clean start for me, not gonna lie. And then I can Ice Spirit here, follow up with an Ice Golem, and then Skeletons. So the only thing that I don't love about this right now is the fact that the Goblin Drill is coming at me full fury. I'm not sure if the Musketeer is going to stay alive. We are trying our hardest to keep that thing alive. Whew, that was close. <laughs> that could have been so much damage, but he got nothing besides the Goblin Drill damage. So we love to see that. Great start right out of the gate. We are up a lot. And this man's going to have a fast Goblin Drill cycle deck too. So no mediocre, no problems, no questions asked. Dude, Firecracker. Okay, I mean, this is... Pretty alluring. I think I have to fire a ball, right? So much value for only negative one trade. What? Oh, I got you baited. I want a refund of my elixir right now, man. You gotta be kidding me. He's gonna Mother Witch right after I fire a ball. Just has to be that way, right? Is that the way that the world works? Apparently so. So I'm gonna go in for a Hog Rider to go and pull the Bandit. We can go and kite the Bandit to the other side and then go in for a Cannon afterward. That'd be awesome. Wait, is the Mother Witch not able to kill one of the Skeletons? How did he get no pigs there? I don't understand that interaction, but I'm not going to question it. We are up so much right now. For the benefit of those who may have missed that, we will show it again through the magic of the instant replay. <gasps> Guys, I've evolved to my final form. We knew that the Mother Witch wouldn't kill any of the skeletons. I was just so big brain that I knew that the cannon cart was going to kill him first. Obviously, completely calculated. <laughs> that was one of the luckiest things I've ever done in my life, but I love it. So, I think we can go in for another Ice Golem here, just to go and kite this other side. And I'm able to just log. We're vibing, right? We just log. We skeletons. We go for another Hog Rider. Like, yo, what's good? What's happening? You having a great time right now, brother? With your skillful Goblin Drill deck, how about you get annihilated by 2.6? One of the best decks for eternity out here. And heck, I can fireball on top of the cannon cart too. And then log it, make sure it doesn't get any damage. Oh, I can't feel my logs! And then the Musketeer damages it down from the distance. That Tyrannosaurus Rex, he's trying to paw at my Musketeer, but he's not able to. It's just not possible out here. So I'm just going to go in for this. Definitely need to be able to defend with a Musketeer and a Logarino. If we're able to get a juicy log and then skeletons afterward, that's a vibe. Oh, okay, that's not really what we wanted to see, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. With 18 seconds remaining, this guy is gonna spam like a madman. You ready for it? He's gonna go Goblin Drill, Cannon Cart, everything at the river. He's gonna be a certified savage of the highest order, or is he giving up? Oh, come on, man. I was, I was gassing you up, I was ready. I was ready for everything to be dropped at the river. And he's like, nope, peace out, buddy. He didn't even wanna play anymore. Anyway, GG, well played, and good luck in the rest of your ladder session. That was just a super easy win. Wait, so we win a lot of games and now we play against someone way lower than us in trophies. What is Clash Shroud doing? Why are they doing that to me? 50 trophies lower? That's illegal. Also, I don't have Cannon in Psycho when he goes in for a Hog Rider. Is this a similar matchup? No, it's gonna be the Earthquake variation. So this matchup is not that good for me because he's able to Earthquake my Cannon and I can't really break through the Tesla if he plays perfectly. But there's a chance that I'm able to win if I play better than him. The Ice Golem's going to vigorously headbutt the tower, and we might be in the damage lead after that. No, not quite. <laughs> That's a bit optimistic, not going to lie. Generally, like going opposite lane here, so then we can go for a Musketeer and not have it get hit by the Earthquake, and that, that always feels real good. So I'm going to go in for the Musketeer here. We're going to try to finagle a bagel and activate King Tower afterward with an Ice Spirit. So let's see if this works out well. I am a believer. Hopefully, I'm not the only one. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Wait, Firecracker, why... Oh, you still, you still activated King Tower. Never mind. <laughs> that was the most roundabout way of activating King Tower that I've ever seen in my life. But I'm vibing with it. That was crazy. I, don't, I just don't understand it. So as you guys saw already, this is not going to be easy. If I go for a cannon here, uh, he's going to Earthquake most likely. If he Earthquakes, I hope he's down Elixir so that I can go for a Hog Rider. He's actually not bad enough to Earthquake in that situation. That's unfortunate. So if he messed up and we were able to get through with a Hog Rider, that would have been absolute finesse. However, another thing that you can do is if you want to be a slippery sir, you can go and push your musketeer into the tower. Nope. If the musketeer locks on, you just win the game. Unfortunately, he's got the mobile gaming athlete reflexes, and he shuts down the hog rider with only one hit on the tower. But I guess we got a lot of elixir out of him. We got a knight, we got skeletons. That's a pretty good vibe, not gonna lie. So I'm wondering, yeah, it's not a good play. 
If I go for the ice comb and I go and kite that, I still have to defend against the hawk rider, right? Uh, wow. She's not gonna earthquake. Never mind. That's a that's a great play. If he had earthquake right there, kill my skeletons. I think I just lost the game straight up. That would have been like three hits on my tower. I can't believe that. I love it. I love it so much. Let's go, baby. So if I go for a hog rider, I go for a preemptive musketeer, predicting the Tesla in the middle. This is a vibe. Hey, let's get it. And then we keep the musketeer alive and we go in for another ice golem hog rider. You guys know what's up. You know the goods. If we make this happen, it's always worth it. So we want an ice spirit here, and I think I can just cycle back to another hog rider. If that happens, we are vibing on a different level. Maybe he goes in for a skeletons or electro spirit, and we get. Oh wow, you got back to another Tesla. Okay, all right, dude, I get it. I get it. You're a savage. Firecracker just swerves sides too. Wait, that's illegal. That is illegal on so many levels. Okay, so we're gonna go for skeletons. Probably need an ice spirit. Dude, that firecracker is just gonna ruin me. It's actually just gonna ruin me. As you guys saw, I said this matchup is not good. Now you know why. Firecracker's kind of broken. All right, we can fireball, but it's not gonna give us anything. We just want a musketeer, maybe log on top of the Tesla, hopefully. I just don't know if we can kill the firecracker. It's kind of a worrisome issue for me. All right, musketeer, just get one more hit. Oh my goodness. All right, firecracker's just gonna jump back into the fireball. That's always a vibe. We are losing right now, which should not happen, especially how well we played at the start, but it's okay. No fear when we've got the hog rider. We're gonna go in with that. We're gonna hit him up with the musketeer. Maybe we can get a Tesla. We do get a Tesla. He's gonna hog rider me. I need to go for a cannon. We are able to pull it barely. Oh my goodness, that was crazy, crazy close. We're gonna log here. I'm gonna ice golem. We need a fireball, the firecracker, or have the ice golem tank for the firecracker. Please, ice golem, just tank for the firecracker. We don't care about you. We care about our musketeers. Don't die like this. We don't care about you. We care about our musketeers. We don't care about you. Okay, Musketeer's still alive. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what we needed. Oh my goodness. We still haven't seen a single earthquake from this guy the entire game. As long as the firecracker goes on the wrong side, it's also a vibe, so we'll take that too. Electric Spirit, I don't even care about you. All right, we're gonna go for a high cannon, Ice Spirit, Musketeer. You guys know the drill. You guys know what's up. We're actually almost winning this with the King Tower activation. Maybe we are winning this. I don't know. This is such a difficult matchup. So we're gonna Fireball here. I do not hit the Tesla. Unfortunate stuff. But maybe we're able to double log on top of the firecracker. That's potentially a play. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Who knows, guys? We're trying our hardest here. We're trying to make it happen for the memes. So we go for a cannon whenever he goes in for a hog rider, which should be very soon. We definitely need to start logging this quick. With that earthquake finally going down from our opponent, this is very problematic. As you guys can see, we do not like that. So I'm going to fireball on top of the firecracker. She's going to meet a bitter, gruesome end, getting burnt alive. I guess the name is pretty fitting out here. We're gonna log, maybe get it, some damage on top of the Tesla. He's just gonna try to earthquake cycle me at this point. And I think he's realized that he's got a really good matchup, which we don't like to see, guys. Wait, why would you? Okay, this is great. This is kind of good. The fact that I think he overcommitted there. I'm not 100% convinced that that is an overcommitment, but it should be, right? You shouldn't be allowed to do that. <laughs> There's no universe that you should be able to do that to me. Okay, so we can log on top of the firecrackers here. Okay, maybe. Yes, that was a great play on our end. Musketeer, just get a hit. No one, no one wants to die. Oh, oh, no, it hit my tower. It hit my tower. Oh my goodness, just log, fireball. I choose you. You got to win us the game. Log, don't come down in time. No, yes. Oh, that was such a tough matchup, but we pulled it out in the end, baby. I can't believe that. A 2.6 hog rider can even win some of the most difficult matchups if you play well enough. Hey, we got a game against this Spectra. What's up, dude? We're gonna sauce out a good luck and give you some love. Maybe if we give you some love, you'll drop stuff in the river on the other side and just ignore this hog rider. We're trying to coax you to <laughs> drop nothing on the hog. Oh, come on, bro. That is the antithesis of nothing. That is a King Tower activation and no damage for us. That's not what we want to see. <laughs> out of all the decks that we hate, we hate Tornado. So I'm going to go in for skeletons here, maybe get a nice cool vibe and try to make something happen. Follow me, boys, follow me. As long as he doesn't have a building too, we can make this work. So he's going to Electro Giant. All right, kind of good. We can go for a cannon here and then Ice Golem so then the Dark Prince doesn't go under the Musketeer. And there is that. The Hog Rider is going to give us a ton of damage because he decided to Galvant through with an Electro Giant and Single Elixir. So there is that play, there is that strategy, and there is gonna be some damage on our tower, but it, it, it was a necessary precaution and we weren't gonna trade that for anything else. I'm an Ice Spirit here. Free. Should be able to focus down the rest of that Mother Witch without any value. And now he's like, okay, I have more damage to the left-hand side. 
I really hope he decides to go in that lane and just ignores the fact that he needs to defend the right hand tower. That's what I'm hoping for right now. We can just hope and pray that this man Electro Giants or drops. Yes, that's what I was hoping for. I can't believe he would do that. He just drops a bomber in the lane that he's not supposed to. So I could fireball, but it's just not a play. Not really a strategy for me right now. Uh, I want to go for skeletons here, but yeah, I guess we go for skeletons and ice golem, and that's uh, generally going to be our best bet. We're able to shut this down, and then musketeer, and then ice spirit, and shut down the rest of the bomber. We're vibing with that. It's still going to be a lot of damage, but not as much as it would have been. All right, he's really concentrated in that lane. That <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. That's actually the tower health that you would have at level nine. If you don't know, now you know. I've played a lot of grand challenges. Just a tidbit of information for you guys. So, what do we do? Are, are we going to keep playing aggressively with hog riders every single chance that we get? Ideally, our best play is the hog rider when he's down elixir. So let's just. Oh, please don't walk on the tower. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was uh, close to a top 10 anime betrayal right there, but we want a hog rider when he electro giants in the back or drops like a four elixir card like that. It's really ideal because now it's going to be difficult for him to make his big move with electro giant successfully. He's going to be spamming a lot of cards at the river. Maybe he even lightnings on top of a cannon. It would be a really bad play. I'd love to see that. Please just lightning on this. You know you want to. You know you want to. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate that. So he's down so much elixir. He gets no value hitting a cannon. And now the Hog Rider is on his tower with an Ice Spirit and another Hog Rider coming at him full force. We can just keep spamming at the river because we are up so much right now. And I can get a Hog Rider on the map before he's ready for it because he's going to go for a Bomber. The Bomber dies. He goes in for a Dark Prince. You aren't back to Tornado. The Ice Golem explodes on your tower. How are you back to a building too? That's illegal, man. I think I have to Fireball Cycle him at this point. If I wasn't able to break through in that particular situation when he messed up that hard. Oh, actually, never mind. This is fine. This is completely okay. I did not expect him to do that either, so we'll vibe with this, we'll just Ice Golem, we'll go in for a Hog Rider, because now he's not back to the Goblin Cage. I think we can Fireball here, depending on what happens. Yeah, I'm definitely going to finesse with a Fireball. Okay, that's a vibe. The Ice Golem's going to give us some damage. Yo, actually, high key, what about this? What if I do one of these? What if I told you I could Fireball and just win off that, and then log you and, and walk away with a win? As long as the Electric Giant doesn't do me dirty, like magically do a thousand damage in one second, we win. So. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Even if you've got Electro Giant with Tornado and never miss a Tornado on top of my Hog Rider, like we got zero damage with Hog Riders. Every single time that guy's Tornadoes were clutch, he still got finessed by 2.6 Hog Rider. And let me tell you, most people that you play against will probably miss a Tornado or at least let the Hog Rider get one hit. Clash Royale! Why is this guy 60 or 70 trophies under me? I don't get it. I will never understand. This actually just is... It, it's trying to tilt me. It's trying to tilt me. It's like, you're right, 2.6 Hog Rider. You know, Jake, this deck has been alive long enough. We are going to destroy it right now. <laughs> oh, man. But I got to tell you something. This deck never dies. So we're going to go for a Hog Rider on the right-hand side. Try to bamboozle him through. Oh, it's going to be a tough matchup, too. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. All right. So we just beat an E-Giant player. And now we're playing against a Bowler. Probably Graveyard Freeze, right? That's what it's looking like. It's looking extra spicy. So if I go for a Cannon and the Bowler dies... Is that a play? Probably. I think it is. Maybe you guys are going to call me a potato for doing this, but I think it's a play. So I'm going to Ice Golem. I'm going to get back to another Hog Rider. Try to finagle a bagel here. If he goes in for a Bard Barrel, it's not going to be able to hit the Ice Spirit. Wow. Wow. Right when you think that the matchup couldn't get any worse. The guy whips out a Tornado, Pekka, tor and a Bowler. All in the same deck. I'm proud of you, dude. You really hate Hog Rider. You're trying to clap me so hard. You know... The thing that I've never understood is like, yeah, he hates Hog Rider, but he is also playing Hog Rider. I think maybe he thinks it's one of the most overpowered win conditions ever. Also, the reason why I didn't go for a cannon is because I wouldn't have Elixir to stop the P.E.K.K.A. And I just, I don't want the P.E.K.K.A. to hit my tower. We don't want to have the P.E.K.K.A. P.E.K.K.A. touching my tower and destroying me here. That's just one of the worst feelings in the world. So we're able to log here just to keep the Musketeer alive a little bit longer. I could Fireball on top of the Bowler. I think that's really the only way that I'm ever going to get damage on this guy anymore. But maybe we can finagle away through with the Musketeer and another Hog Rider push after this. It's just tough because I think the Bowler retargets on the tower. Maybe it just bops the Musketeer on the other side if it gets another hit. Fortunately, it doesn't. Uh, we can Hog here and Ice Spirit again on top of the P.E.K.K.A. I don't know if this is going to work. We really need that P.E.K.K.A. to get frozen. Come on, baby, let's go! That's what I'm talking about. So are you going to be able to break through? I mean, you're dropping an Ice Wizard to kill my Skeletons. You are really feisty. You are a ferocious and feisty, sir. So I might go for a cannon here. Yeah, I think I go for a cannon up top. Up top for the pop. So then you can't fireball on top of the musketeer. Oh, wow. 
All right, who said anything about Fireball? I didn't say anything about Fireball. Gosh, you, did you hear Fireball here? It's just lightning, straight lightnings all day, every day. Seriously? Okay, yeah, so this guy wasn't as good as the last player. The last player never missed a single tornado on top of the hog, and this guy did. All right, so we at least bait out a uh, bowler here. Still pretty spicy, not going to be easy, not going to lie. I wish I could. wish I could tell you it was going to be easy peasy, but yeah, I'm going to have to fireball on all this and then maybe go in for skeletons. The reason why I'm not going for cannon is because it's kind of against my religion to give spell value to people that don't deserve it. Damn! So, this guy's not going to get it. I'm going to log here and I can fireball and walk away the win. This is a very funny and interesting game to say the least, but... I'm gonna get like 25 trophies from this. I'm literally gonna get like 25, 26 trophies for beating one of the hardest counters I've ever played in my life. Clash Royale, you need to base the trophies gain off of the matchup that you play. If the guy has six counters to Hog Rider, he deserves to lose like 40 trophies. I mean, honestly, come on now. What's up with that? Yeah, 26 trophies. <laughs> Brutal, baby. Absolutely devastating. And 2.6 is still an incredibly solid deck. We outplayed any matchup. Like, subscribe, and have a phenomenal rest of your day. Oh,